So welcome everyone to our Bhagavad Gita Guru. I'll begin with some respects to my spiritual masters. Agana Timananda Shaganjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Nina Tusme Shri Guravini Maha. I offer my respectful obeisances unto my spiritual master, who with the torchlight of knowledge has opened my eyes to be blinded by the darkness of ignorance. Namaste Shalvakti Vijay Goldwaranyai Shimati Vijay Prema Bhakti Rizam Vade Param Vijay Prabhavini Maha Ram Vishnu Paraya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vidanda Shamani Tinami Namaste Sarasandhi Vigorani Chani Namaste Shashini Radhi Pastita Deshitami Ram Vishnu Paraya Radhikai Priyatne Shri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayana Tinamini Shri Shri Deva Goswami Raja Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasari Thakur Ki Jai Shri Bhakti Vedanta Thakur Ki Jai So um, today when I was, uh, we went shopping together, uh, Ras Lila and myself, and I was in the supermarket and I gave this one gentleman a, a flyer, a little Hare Krishna flyer. And we got talking and um, he was about in his 70s, you know. Very nice man. And uh, anyway, he started telling me about his problems, you know. And he, he, he said to me that he got involved with a lady uh, 20 years younger than himself, and they got married. Um, but he started to realize that the reason she married him was to get his money, to get his house. Hmm? Was this here in Norton? Yeah, yeah, just here in Checkers, I was up there. Sure. So, and... Uh, <coughs> So anyway, he said that it was a terrible, you know, nine years of, of marriage, lots and lots of drama and trouble. Um, uh, so, and eventually he divorced her. He divorced her. But then there was a settlement, 25%. He agreed to give her... Uh, 250,000 rand, quarter of a million rand. But anyway, there's a long story. But uh, now he's decided he's he's going to he's going to try and not give her the money. You know, she because she she was obviously not in good faith. You know, he married her in good faith, and she was just after the money and the house. So he doesn't want to give her that 250,000 rand uh, and he's going to carry on fighting in court yeah and he's in his 70s he's in his 70s yeah, already yeah. You know? Shame. so I said to the man um, you know and you can see he's very angry he's very mm. upset he, he, he obviously feels very uh, a lot of ill will toward her, you know, he's yes. very much disturbed yes. by that relationship. And he, you know, he's, you can see he's, it, it's taking up all his time, his energy, this whole thing, you know. Um, so I said to him, look, you know, I said to him, uh, Pat, his name was Pat, I said, Pat, if you knew that you've got another 24 hours to live, one more day, hmm, if you knew, that in 24 hours' time, you're going to pass away. You're going to leave this world. What would you do with that 24 hours? Huh? What would you do? So I said, you know, he said, well, he'd get his affairs together and this and that. He's a Catholic man. He's a Catholic man. He's a, uh, he also told me that he'd moved away from the Catholic Church because he felt it was so full of hypocrisy. The Catholic Church is like a business. They're making money, you know. So he hasn't lost faith in God, but he's lost faith in the institution, you know, the Catholic institution. So he's a godly man. Um, so I said to him, you know, 
and his his family also they say look let it go let it go just don't get it you know you 250,000 and let it go don't get involved you know it's not he's he's an old man he's in his 70s um anyway i don't think he's going to change you know he's going to go to court and fight this thing mm. and try and get his money and you know yeah. but um it reminds me of a, a Krishna story, a true story, that one time there was the king, uh, even 5,000 years ago, it wasn't that long ago, called Maharaj Parikat. And he was emperor of the whole world. He was a, a very big personality. But he was also a devotee. He was a great devotee of Krishna. And one time he was, he was uh, riding in the forest, and he got thirsty, so he approached a, uh, a saintly man. He was living, you know, the saints, they'd sometimes live in the forest, you know, alone like that. So this, he wanted to go to the saintly man sitting there to get some water. This man was in meditation, you know. So when the king came to ask for water, he didn't pay attention, this man. He was in trance, you know, he was in meditation. But the king took it as if he'd been insulted hmm? so he, there was a snake a dead snake lying nearby and he took that snake and he put it on this man's shoulders you know as a kind of a uh, just to react that you know you, you didn't honor me with some water i'm the king you know anyway the, the man didn't do anything but his son found out that his father had been insulted like that with putting this dead snake on his you know, I garland him with a snake. So the boy, the boy was a very powerful, in those days they called Brahmins. The Brahmins are very powerful. They have a lot of Shakti. You don't get that today. But this boy was so powerful that he cursed the king. He cursed him that he would die in seven days. He, by, by snake bite, a snake bird would bite him. Um... The king had the power to reverse the curse. He could have done that. He was also very powerful. But he submitted. He agreed. All right. I, you know, I, I, I accept that maybe I didn't do the right thing. Yeah? So let me take the reaction. And this Brahmin boy has cursed me that I will die in seven days. He knew. He had forewarning that in seven days he will die. Guaranteed. Yeah? He's got the curse from the Brahmin. Uh, so he thought, how can I prepare myself for death? I've got seven days now, and I'm going to, how can I prepare myself for death? How can I get ready for death? Huh? We don't have, we don't even have seven minutes. We don't know. In one second, I can drop down dead here. My heart, yeah? But he had seven days to prepare. Maharaj Brickin, what did he do? He... Decide, he called together a lot of saints, great saintly people of the time, and he asked their advice. And they said, what you should do for seven days, you sit down and you hear about Krishna. Hmm? From a great saint, Shukadev Goswami. And that's what he did. He sat down by the Ganges River and these great saints came. Because he was the king of the world. He was no ordinary person. He was Maharaj Parikit. He was the emperor of the whole world. And he's sitting there on the Ganges River, fasting, no food, no drink. Yeah? And Shukadeva Goswami, a great saint, began to speak about Krishna. Uh, and that book is called Srimad Bhagavatam. We're reading Bhagavad Gita, which is undergraduate. And then graduate study is the Srimad Bhagavatam, which describes the activities of Krishna. Bhagavad Gita is just the spoken word of the Lord. It's also history. But Srimad Bhagavatam describes the activities of Krishna and his devotees. So for seven days, he sat down on the Ganges uh, with Shukadeva Goswami speaking, this Bhagavatam. 18,000 verses. It's a great, great book, you know. And then at this, after the seven days came, the snake came and bit him. And he left, his, he left this world, you know. The reason I'm telling that is this man here in the supermarket, you know, um, I was trying to point out, because he's also in his 70s. He's not, how much longer is he going to live, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, and now he's getting involved in the court case with the woman and the divorce and the money. You know, he's an old man. Um, you know, money yeah. can, things can, I know we off our little meeting at the moment, but also maybe it's good to communicate a bit. But, um, like, money can, and that can bring absolute bitterness and ugliness and terrible things, you know. And But I want to tell you, my daughter's last words to me tonight was, I can't wait for God to take you away. Mm. I can't wait. Now, isn't that cursing somebody? Well, well you know, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, we we need to we need to get lessons, you see, from the great the great souls. The great souls, the great saints, yeah. Come to this world, to, to to give us very important guidance and assistance, you know, because they know our worldly problems. You know what I'm saying? So, so therefore, they, they have a great gift to give us. Mm. Mm. You know, nobody looks for trouble, mm. isn't it? Mm. Nobody looks for trouble. Mm. This man, he married this woman in good faith. He was going to look after her, and she took advantage of him, you know, you see? The same with your situation with your, with your granddaughter. You know, you bring a child, you Debbie, into the world. She has a child. You're not looking for problems, no. somebody else coming Same into the situation, thing. you know, wanting money and this and that. You know, we don't look for these things, you know, we don't look for the trouble, no. but it comes. No. And in the Krishna literature, there's an example given, it's like a fire, a forest fire. Nobody wants a fire, no, a big fire, everything's burning, everything's, you know, the whole place is on fire. Sometimes you see in California, huge, huge fires, houses are burnt down, everything. Nobody wants a fire, but it comes. So the material world is like that. You don't want the problems. Nobody wants problems, but the problems come. Mm. Yeah. So how can we understand what's happening? And not because they compare this material world to a blazing forest fire. The, the problems are so consuming. Yeah. The money problems, the divorce, this man wanting to, you know, to take your money with your grandchild. Whew, big stuff. It's like a forest fire, isn't it? It's burn you up. Is it burn you up? Uh, very powerful. It's so powerful. These, the same with this guy with this divorce situation and this woman taking money. You know, she was obviously calculating that she will. He was a much older man, twenty years older than him. Uh, obviously, he wanted the female company. Yeah. yeah. And meantime, she's thinking, let me get the money, let me get yes. the house, you know. Yes. So, and here's the man, he's had a good heart. Yeah. He had a good heart. Yeah. So he didn't look for trouble, but it came. And now there's a whole thing with the court and the 250,000, quarter of a million rand. So you don't want it, and it's so big. The situation is so powerful. The same with your granddaughter. It, you, as you said, when you walked in tonight, you got to hand it over to God. You see, so this is actually the lesson. Mm -hmm. This is the lesson. Until you learn that lesson, mm. you will be burning in the fire. Mm. Whether you burn in the fire this lifetime, the next lifetime, another lifetime, a thousand lifetimes, you'll keep on burning in the fire mm. until you say what you've just said. Mm. Let me hand it over to God. Mm. You see, so the same with this man here. That's what I try to say to him. Mm. Why don't you just pray to the Lord mm. to give you God? Because this is burning him up. Let's take, he's, he's in his 70s, his life is pretty much over. Know, and what's he doing? He's fighting in court. I hmm? know, I know. What, he's, no, he's got no peace in his life. He wanted happiness. No happiness in his yeah. life. He's fighting in court in his 70s. What is this? Yeah. So, uh, the, what, what is the lesson? This is the point. What is the lesson? Now, Shukadev Goswami, this great saint, he had warning seven days. Mm -hmm. You will live now seven days. What are you going to do? Hmm? with your time. That's what I said to this man. The most valuable thing you've got is your time and your energy. Your time, your energy. What are you going to do with it? Hmm? And you don't know how long you've got. Mm, you see? Sure, yeah. So that's the choice that we make. But the great saints like this Maharaj Parikat said, what am I going to do? I'm going to sit down and hear about Krishna for seven days. Yeah. That's the lesson for all of us. For, he had seven days. He knew he's got seven days. We don't know we got seven days. Seven seconds, seven minutes, we don't know. But we should follow that example. What is that example? 
hear about Krishna, speak about Krishna. Mm. Why? Because everything here is temporary. Mm. Your granddaughter, your daughter, the wife, the husband, the car, the house, the money, it's all temporary. Everything. We not you see, Joy, we're not of this world. Mm. This is the big lesson. I'm not of this world. Mm. This is nobody's home. But we're attached. Mm. We're very attached. I'm attached to my daughter, my granddaughter, my husband, my wife, my money, my ba I'm very attached. Yeah. Mm. Why are you attached? It's temporary. It will not last. Uh, so this, the saints, the great saints come and say, be attached to, to that which lasts forever. Mm. What's that, Krishna? Mm. Your relationship with God mm. lasts forever. Mm. We should try to understand that. Yeah. Because I am I'm eternal. I am the soul. Mm. The soul lasts forever. The body is going to drop <clears> off <throat> tomorrow, yeah. today, next week. So what is my real treasure? You know, people say, oh, well, you know, I'm looking for an investment, assets, you know, let me make, let me secure my situation, you know. What is that? It'll be finished. You won't take it, you won't take one cent with you. So what is that? Is it an asset? It, it's not, no. It's, a, it's an illusion. Hmm? It's not real security. It's not a real investment. Because it will not take, it will not go with the soul, you know. So people have to get this understanding. Um, and until you get that understanding, you keep coming back to this material world. Mm. Yeah. It'll be a different situation. You'll be living in a different place, a different planet. Mm. But it'll be the same story. <clears throat> some drama will be happening, you know, some money issues, some relationship issues. Mm. It, the characters will just change. Yeah. But the problem will be the same. Why? Because you aren't learning. You aren't learning that I have to surrender to Krishna. Mm. You have to learn. Mm. It's, a, it's a lesson mm. for all of us. Mm. Nobody can say, well, I'm having a rough time and this one's a good time. No, this is all a bad time. <laughs> to be in the material world is a bad time for everybody. Mm. What's the lesson? The lesson is, like Sugardev Goswami, hear about Krishna. Use your time, your energy. It's very valuable. You know, so if you try to live your life like that and say, okay, today I can spend my time getting involved with issues like money and divorce and court cases and this and that, yeah. Or I can say, hey, wait a minute. Can I step back from this and say, listen, my soul, my time, my energy, thank you. I choose to direct it towards seeking the Lord, Krishna, you know, because it's eternal. Nobody can say, well, I don't have that choice. You do have that choice. So therefore, you, you're actually creating your own problems. Mm. This man, he's going to go and fight in the court now mm. for 250,000 rand. He's already in his 70s. He could die tomorrow. Yeah. Well, it's his choice. Mm. He doesn't have to go. He doesn't have to go. He can say, go, take, take the money, go. He can do that, but he won't do that. No, I'm going to fight this woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's his choice. That's his choice. Nobody to blame. You see? Because he's not looking after his soul. He's not looking after his soul. No. So until he learns that lesson, that nothing in this world is Did of... She follow us, by the Some way. of it. So, okay. Nothing Shine. in this world is of any value, really. Mm. Nothing. Why? Because it's temporary. It's temporary. <clears throat> I'm not temporary. I'm not temporary. I'm the soul. I'm eternal. So... I need something that I can hold on to forever. And that's Krishna. Yeah. So. <clears throat> can I just ask you yeah. one other thing? Yeah. I just want to know if somebody like her words to me, I hate you. And I mean, it's not the first time this has been. I hate you so much. And I wish God would. I can't wait for God to take you away type of thing. Isn't there a danger it can revert onto that person? That's that's trying to cast almost evilness over you. You know what I'm trying to say. No, sure. Look, but you know, this is another thing that we that we need to also try to uh, live this kind of life where we 
we, you know, we need to be compassionate to ourselves first. Yeah. Be kind to yourself. What do you need to be peaceful? What do you need to be fulfilled? You know, what do you need to have a, a quality life? Hmm? Not only this life, but the next. This is what you need to do. That's, you should do that. That's not being selfish. That's being kind to yourself. God wants you to do that. Yeah? So, like I say, what other people do, whether it's your brother, your sister, okay. your granddaughter, or whatever, you know, they've got their own journey. They've they got their own their journey. Own. Krishna, Krishna will, will be looking over the situation. We don't have to be policemen. Oh, what's going to happen to you if you say this and I say that? No. Of course it hurts, you know, because these are yeah. close family members, etc. Yeah. But as far as where are they going with their lives, mm -hmm. you can do your best. Yeah, yeah. You, can, yeah. you can set an example yes. of what you believe to be a good life, uh, um, a pure life, trying to devote yourself to God. But if other people don't want to follow, you know, whether it's your sister, your grandmother, your daughter, whoever, mm. what can you do? What can you do? Mm. You know, we all fly our own airplane. Mm. Yeah, everybody's flying their own airplane. Mm. So, of course, on a personal level, it hurts. But we can't get involved in other people's choices, mm. you know? Mm. And the consequences thereof. You understand? That's between them and Krishna. Mm. It's not your business. Mm. Yeah? So you don't have to go there with your mind. You focus on what you need. For, mm. Just like tonight you came to the meeting. Mm. Because you felt, I need, I I need some it. spiritual yes, absolutely. comfort, you know. Mm. That was your choice. You could have gone sat in a movie. Yeah. You know? mm. Or go visit a friend or sit mm. in a pub like yeah. some people do. But you made the choice to come here. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. We look after ourselves mm. first. Mm. First. Mm. Then come others. Mm. It's not being selfish. No. One of my gurus said like that. That unless you're compassionate to yourself. You can't be compassionate to anyone else. No, no, you can't. can't. So that means, like I say, you you know your granddaughter can say something like that, uh, feeling so much uh, yeah, hostility. My daughter. Said, uh, your daughter said yes, that. Yeah. Not yeah. You know, your daughter said something like She's that too. She's in the middle, you know, poor child. But and I honestly believe. Look, I've been through this for the last five years. I've been. I feel, I would say to Helen back, because it's not been an easy road. And not having <clears> the support from that side and fighting me constantly. I, and, and often I said, oh God, take over and, you know, do something. And it's never happened. And out of the blues, it's now happened. And I emphatically believe it was God's time to deal with it for me, you know. Mm, so I'm mm. not going to let it worry me. I'll let every step take its course now. Mm. But let them find out what it's like to have look after a child of 16. Now she is. And let them deal with every day and all the whims and the woes that go with it, you know. Mm. And then they can see what I've been through. It's not that she's a bad child. I'm just talking about I've been condemned so much for everything. Let them deal with it. Yeah. But I think good yeah. that God has now taken and said, right, now, is the time and mm. I, I feel at peace knowing that you know mm. Mm. although my <clears throat> daughter's words to me were very hard so it nearly broke me up and it's you know i mean it's it's hard when you're the parent to contend with it and you've done it all out of love and care you know mm. and i'm sorry to have to say it to you but i don't trust that man you know mm. for many reasons you know and i'm not being nasty there's a big background to it mm. and i believe emphatically he's only after because there's a trust concern for Tristan, you know, and he once he's got control, he'll take it. But I'm leaving it now, Andrew. Yeah. What no, as I say, we, we need to at yeah. some point say, um, I'm stepping out of this and trusting, you know, yeah. the, the will of God, yeah. you know, yeah. um, instead of, you know, because it's just yeah. mental stuff. Yeah. You've got to get the consciousness higher. That's right. Yeah. But we're going to read it back to uh, Bhagavad yeah. Gita chapter and then we'll do some chanting as well. So we're reading from the sixth chapter, Divine Communion through Prayer and Contemplation. The all-knowing Lord continued, Those who serve out of a sense of sacred obligation and not out of a desire for payment are genuine and unsets, sincere seekers of truth. However, this cannot be said of those who culture complete inaction and will undergo no sacrifice for my sake. 
No one can come to know full communion with me without first turning away from mental cravings. Genuine renunciation is a fundamental characteristic of pure devotional service. For those who are novices on the way towards communion with me, active engagement in the purifying practice of divine service is said to be the means for attaining perfection. Those perfect servants who have already attained to deep communion with me are seen to be ever tranquil and blessed. A person may be said to want a person may be said to be in full communion with me when the tendency to respond slavishly to mental stimuli has been overcome, when self motivated action has been given up, and sensory demands transcended. One must consciously arrange for one's deliverance and not unconsciously fall into degradation. The mind may either act as our great ally or our deadly enemy. For those who have achieved self mastery, the mind is like a pleasant friend. But those who have failed to do so appear to be living with a treacherous enemy. Indeed, they become enemies to their very selves. The fully realized souls, having attained the summit of self-mastery, live in deep communion with the Supreme Person, caring not for heat and cold, happiness and misery, prestige or disrepute. Self-satisfied with the attainment of the divine wisdom which comes through self-mastery, absorbed in the sublime and precious truth, the saints see gold to be no different from stone. Those who are far advanced naturally show love to both saints and sinners, wish well to both friends and foes, and seek to act as peacemakers amongst the belligerents. Those who seek such perfection should retire to a secluded place for prayer and become absorbed in continuous devotion, carefully guarding the consciousness to keep it free from false attractions and exploitative tendencies. Having found an appropriate sitting place in some pure and holy land, they should sit comfortably after laying, first laying down a grass mat and a cloth, and then with single pointed attention they should balance the mind, absorb the consciousness, and in this way purify the heart. Keeping their bodies straight with heads erect, they should remain still and free their eyes from distraction. With peaceful and happy minds, undisturbed by fears, firmly continent and resolved, they should absorb full consciousness in me, making me the ultimate goal of life. The saints who constantly practice in this way quickly make friendship with their minds, come to taste the peace which lies beyond all suffering, and finally come to live with me. Communion with me can best be maintained by those who neither eat nor fast to excess, sleep to excess, or too often, too often keep a night vigil. The middle way should be followed in matters of diet, exercise, works and rest, as such practice will help one to overcome all suffering. Those souls have learned to discipline consciousness and remain fixed in transcendence, beyond the force of sense desire, may be said to be true adepts. Just as a flame sheltered from the breeze burns bright and steady, so shines the consciousness of the saints absorbed in full communion with me. Arriving at the plane of pure consciousness, wherein the practice of divine service has brought about self-restraint, they gain a position to relish the complete satisfaction which comes from seeing the true self. Solidly reposed in the Supreme Truth, the connection of the universe comes through transcendental senses through which they taste infinite pleasure and a holy joy. Upon reaching such a platform, the self-realized souls conclude that there remain no more goals worthy of achievement. Being so deeply absorbed in divine communion, they know no agitation even in the face of severe difficulties. Such steady absorption in divine service should be understood as the only remedy for the miseries which arise from mundane connection. Divine service should be practiced with confidence and in a clear consciousness of communion with me, completely transcending the force of the sense desires generated by mental stimuli One should use the mind as a regulator over the sensory movements. Progress should be gradual, stage by stage, and full conviction must be achieved by reasoned intelligence. At last the mind will always graze in the pasturing grounds of the eternal homeland, the realm of supreme truth and beauty, and will never wander elsewhere. Wherever the mind wanders through impetuosity and intemperate habit, it must certainly be brought back and placed under the shelter of the divine herdsmen. By absorbing their minds in full consciousness of me, my divine servants experience transcendental pleasure of the highest order, Passions calm, they achieve freedom from blame, and come to perceive the Supreme Divine Person face to face. 
By continuous engagement on the sacred path of service, the self-realized souls are completely cleansed of all worldly pollution, and coming to know the Supreme Truth personally, they relish the highest ambrosia of divine life. Souls in full communion with me see me seated in the hearts of all, and realize that all souls also dwell in my heart. True saints cannot help but see me everywhere. Those who perceive my presence in all places and see all things in relationship to me are never deprived of my shelter nor ever forgotten by me. My divine servants see in truth that I am the one who dwells within the hearts of all, and thus they remain fully devoted to me in all circumstances. True saints love all souls as if they were their very selves and understand their joys and sorrows. Arjuna Lin responded, O destroyer of the demons of doubt, the path towards divine communion, which you have pointed out, appears to be beyond the power of my restless and flickering mind to follow. For the mind is indisputably unstable, easily agitated, powerful and obdurate. My dear Krishna, I think it would be easier to calm a gale than to tame it. The blessed Lord thereupon replied, There is no doubt, my mighty on Kanteya, that it is very hard to bring tranquility to the stormy mind. But success will come in the end by continuous practice and total dedication. Failure to tame the mind will place communion with me out of reach, but it is my conviction that those who learn to properly supervise the mind's activities by adopting appropriate spiritual techniques are certain to achieve success. Then Arjuna asked, What becomes of a faithful soul who, after taking up the divine way, allows the mind to be deviated? and thus fails to achieve the perfection of divine communion. Does not such a person lose everything like a cloud when it bursts, having no more place in this world, and yet unable to follow the road laid down by the Supreme Person? Such souls have turned their backs on material success, but have no hope for liberation. This is my uncertainty, and I beg you to do away with it entirely. I shall find no one apart from you, my dear Krishna, who has the power to resolve this doubt, because you alone are all-knowing. The all-attractive Lord then said, My dear Talbot Pritta, those who take up the path of auspicious action shall never come to an evil destination, either in this world or in the hereafter. Goodness can only beget goodness. Deviated from the purely spiritual path, the immature aspirants will et- enter the subtle planes of celestial enjoyment, which are populated by devout souls who have performed volumes of pious deeds. After many years there, they will take birth again in happy families, of holy and aristocratic parents. Alternatively, they would be fortunate enough to take birth in a family of my devoted servants who are always enthused by love for me. A birth such as this is a rare and precious opportunity. Having gained such a favorable birth, their consciousness of divine service is reawoken, and taking up from where they left off, they strive again to reach the perfection of love over in some of the Kurus. By dint of prenatal experience, they are drawn intuitively to inquire about the way of divine communion and rise quickly above the detailed injunctions of the scriptures. Those who endeavor sincerely attain a consciousness purified of all pollution, and because of the efforts of their many previous births, they are able to quickly achieve the highest goal of life. Those who seek communion with me are of higher order than the ascetics, the scholars, and the selfish workers. You must therefore always strive for such communion, my beloved Arjuna. It is my conviction that of all those who seek me, those ever-faithful souls who always live in love with me, continuously seeing me in the core of their hearts and always worshipping me by engagement in selfless divine service, attain to the deepest levels of communion with me and are the best amongst all souls. So Krishna is talking about uh, how important it is to control the mind. Um, So this whole process of Krishna consciousness, or Bhakti Yoga as it's called, uh, begins with Shraddha. Shraddha means faith. Ado Shraddha. That I have some faith that I should try to hear about God. You know, this is my human position. Um, and it's compared to a little seed in your heart. Bhakti, it's called Bhakti Lata Bij. Bij means seed, and Lata means a creeper, and Bhakti means a devotion. So it's like that, the, the seed of devotion for God. In other words, every one of us has uh, a loving relationship with God. 
It is natural. It is there. This is like the child that can... Um, he, he knows how to walk. You just help him a little bit, yeah? He, he crawls and then he gets up on his feet. It's already there, the walking. He doesn't have to be... Uh, how do you say? It's, it's, it's a natural instinct. So we have love for God, love for Krishna, um, but it's covered. It's covered. We are very much completely absorbed in this material world. The comings, the goings, the ups and downs, they, they, that's our life, isn't it? So we take this world as everything. But no, it's not everything. This world is actually just a few seconds in time and then it's finished. A life in this world. But the spiritual world is forever. The spiritual world. Uh, there there's no birth, old age, disease and death. Here, I, one of my spiritual masters gives the example. He says, this is like camouflage. Just like I was thinking in the army, you know, you get these soldiers, they go out into the battlefield, and sometimes they'll take plants and leaves and bushes and they'll cover themselves to make themselves look like they're, you know, just part of the nature. But underneath there's a soldier with a gun, yeah? Camouflage. So the same thing with this world. Hey, it looks very beautiful, isn't it? Yeah? Everything. Beautiful sky, mountains, sea, flowers, beautiful people, yeah? It looks like, wow, it's all beautiful. But underneath, what's happening? There's a monster, an invisible monster called time. And he's devouring everybody. Everybody is going to get old, yeah? Diseased and die. He's like a monster. And he's... So it's camouflage. There's a glamour here, isn't it? Um, so we need to be aware of that. Uh, and see the reality here for what it is. This is Maya illusion. Hmm? And Krishna says, um, how are you going to do that? You need to firstly take help from Guru. You can't do it on your own. You need Guru, a self-realized soul, a saint. Uh, because he's not... This world does not attract him. He's not under illusion. He sees it as it is, yeah? He's not under illusion. So therefore he can help you also see things as they are. And at the same time, he's very attracted to Krishna. I mean, he's in love with Krishna, actually. Well, we're not in love with Krishna. We're in love with this world. We're in love with our bodies, other people's bodies, Children, family, bank balance, we're in love. Yeah? This is crazy. This is crazy because it's temporary. Uh, you cannot hold on to it. <clears throat> no, it will slip away. It will slip away. So the saint comes and says, you turn your attention to Krishna. Hmm? Just like when we... Sometimes devotees, when they greet each other, when they leave each other, they say, Krishna matir as tu. May your attention be on Krishna. Krishna matir as tu. It's Sanskrit. Very powerful. Your attention. Where are you giving your attention? What are you thinking about? Huh? Are you thinking about this problem, that problem? Hmm? Or are you thinking about Krishna? You know, this is the thing. We can choose. We can choose. And that attachment is so strong. You know, this guy today at the supermarket, his whole life is... Con I'm a total stranger. I met him in, in 60 seconds. He's telling me this huge drama about his divorced wife and the money. He's, can you imagine? He's so, he's so consumed. Yeah. He's so consumed by this problem. It's eating him up. Yeah, that in, a, in, in 60 seconds, he'll tell a total stranger his whole life story and all his drama. Mm. You see how powerful that attraction is mm. to money mm. and power. And, you know, 
woman and this and that. So it's extremely powerful. In fact, it's so powerful, you can't get free of it yourself. Only God can free you of that attachment. Wow, how powerful is that? We have to learn that. This attraction is so powerful and destructive because it's not doing anyone any good. To come back to this material world again and again, samsara, is that any good for anyone? Birth, old age, disease and death, again and again. Is that a good situation for anyone? No. And yet we keep doing it. Huh? So powerful is this attraction. It consumes you. Hmm? Eats you up. Takes your life. It takes your life. Who can help you? Only God. It's so powerful. He and his saints can help you. Nobody else, no professor, no doctor, no uh, scientist, huh? no politician is going to help you. No family member either. It's you're on your own. Yeah? Just like this man, his, 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 his family are telling him, his, his children, let the woman go, let her take the money. No, he can't do that. Yeah? He's holding on. He'll fight in the court. Just see how powerful this thing is. So he's not thinking about God. No, sir. Hmm? And what does that mean? Come back again next lifetime, take another birth, get another body, get old, diseased and die again. Because he's choosing that. He's choosing not to think about God. Very, very critical situation as human beings. We have a great responsibility. The dogs and cats, they don't have that responsibility. They just eat, sleep, get born, you know, die. It's, there's no choice. Hmm? But we, as human beings, have this big responsibility. What am I going to do with my human life? Am I going to devote it to God or stay in this material jungle and fight? Hmm? What do you want to do? Yeah? Your choice. Your choice. So Krishna is saying, you need help. You need help. I, Krishna will give you help and Guru will give you help. But take the help. Take it. Don't push it away. But you need help. We have to. That's actually part of the whole human understanding is that I need to realize I'm in a bad situation. But people are still thinking, I'm having a good time. Oh, I'm enjoying. I've got a new BMW, you know. I've got promotion at work. My kids are going to private schools. We're going to the Seychelles for a holiday. Things are so beautiful. I just bought myself a new suit. Happy, happy. What is that happiness? That madness. In one second, it's finished. Everything you hold near and dear. Your family, you know, you see people, they're driving around in the car. Hey, you've got the father and the mother sitting there and the kids in the back of the car. And, you know, happy family. We're going to... Kirsten Bosch for a picnic, we're going to go down to the beach, you know. Lovely sunny day, Cape Town, happy holiday. And the next thing, bam, some mad drunkard drives into you and kills your whole family, you know. So, in a second, that so-called happiness that you're holding on to, that you think will last forever, is finished. It will never last forever. So... It's harsh, it's cruel, but we need to learn that the, 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 we need to see the reality and also see that there's a positive alternative. We don't have to become depressed and negative. No, we have to see that there's a positive alternative. What is that? I need to inquire about God. I need to cultivate, I need to connect with God, with Krishna. That's how I should use my time and energy as a human being. That's what I should be doing with my time and energy. Because with that time and energy, you can solve the real problems forever. Only in this human form of life. Not in any of the other species. Mm, and there are 8,400,000. So, wow, what an absolutely amazing opportunity. Um, and that, as Krishna says, is the only way to solve all the miseries of material existence. There's no other way, you know. 
And the, the more we surrender to that and say, okay, um, I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want that to happen. So many unwanted situations, you know, with family and friends and career and money, you know, and health. What to speak of health, you know. I don't want all this stuff, you know. I just want a peaceful, happy. I don't want to take anybody down. I just want to be a live and let live, you know. But no, this is the material world. You see, this is where I am. It's a nasty place. Um, the more we get that realization, instead of thinking, no, hey, I can still enjoy here. Just let me just sort this out, sort that out, and then I'll really enjoy, you know. Sort this problem, uh, but the next day another problem is there. You know? So we need to say, hey, this is the world of problems. It is the world of problems. You can't say, well, uh, I'll solve them. No, this is the world of problems. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Dukaliyam Vishashvatam, this is a temporary place full of miseries. So the more we get that realization that, you know, turn your attention to God, to the eternal. Um, and then, you know, we get this wonderful process called Bhakti Yoga, where you get the seed of devotion in your heart. And by hearing and chanting about Krishna under the guidance of the Guru, that little seed is like a spiritual garden in your heart. It begins to grow, you know, the seed is growing, the little plant. Um, and what does that mean? It means you're becoming more and more attached to spiritual life and saying, hey, hey, I don't want to go and do material stuff and go to a movie or go ice skating. Or, no, I'd rather go and sit with some friends and talk about God, you know. I'd rather do that. You know, that means a little seed is starting to grow, you know. And of course, as it grows, it, 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 there's wonderful things happening that, you know, we, we actually start becoming we beginning to feel a connection with God, you know, a relationship with Krishna. And it begins with the holy name. This is the wonderful thing, that the name of God um, is non-different from God. So that little bit of faith that we've got, we begin to see, realize that my connection with Krishna, with God, is the holy name. Starting with the name doesn't end there, and that means that my faith in the name is growing. I'm developing more faith in the holy name. That's a very deep subject. That the more I, because how am I going to think about God? How am I going to think about Him? He's got a name. He's got lots of names. Just like I can think of Roseanne or Joy, yeah, I can think about your name. So we can think about Krishna and his name, or Gauranga, same Lord. We're thinking about him. We think about his name. We're thinking about him. And that thinking has is very powerful. It's very powerful. And you start beginning the, the realization that the, the, the name of Krishna is, is alive. Material sound is dead. But transcendental sound? spiritual sound is alive so that name of Krishna is alive the holy name and that name of Krishna has the power to give you all protection all guidance all love all blessings that name it's very not a not a material name and the more we chant the more we realize that and then we, so what's happening we're becoming attached to the holy name and as that happens we become less and less attached to everything else because all those material attachments ultimately just bring you unhappiness it's hard but it's true you know you're attached to your family your business your career your money but sooner or later it's all got to go and when it goes, it hurts. Yeah. So that attachment is actually causing you pain. So it's actually a relief when those attachments are actually uh, taken away. Where you are relieved, when you no longer have those attachments. Wow. How about that? It doesn't mean you become hard-hearted. It just means you become attached to Krishna. 
You know, you become attached to Krishna. You're not stopping. You have a heart, you have love, but that's focused on Krishna. And that gives satisfaction. There's no cheating there. There's no insult there. There's no abuse there in that relationship. So naturally, it's very satisfying. You know, so it's kind of like they give that example. If you're carrying this old smelly rock around, dirty old smelly rock, and I say, listen, why don't you put down that rock and take this beautiful shiny diamond? Yeah? You're carrying around this smelly old rock. Put it down. Take this beautiful diamond. Yeah? This is spiritual life. We're carrying around the burden of this material body. Life after life. For what? For what? Yeah? So we need the help of the Lord and His pure devotees to, to make that journey you know, under their guidance. It's not an f- overnight thing. A five minute thing it's very deep you know just sit, just for <clears throat> one soul to actually surrender to Krishna is a huge thing why because we've been against the Lord for so long forgetful of him for so long so um, we can chant some little bit yeah we'll chant to Goranga are you going to take her to the temple at all we have a little temple here, that's fine. Ah, oh, you're not going to go there too. Yeah. So we'll chant a little bit Karanga now. You're going to play Kartal now, to my DJ? Thank you. 
Shri Bhakti Rakshak Shri Deva Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Namachari Shri Hari Das Thakur Ki Jai Anand Kodi Vaishnava Indi Ki Jai Prem Sikha Har Shri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhupada Anand Shri Vidya Dhar Shri Vasani Gaur Bhakti Indi Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Govapinath Shama Kundrada Kundi Gavadhan Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Vuna Mai Ki Jai Brindabandam Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Shri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, Shri Dhammadeep Dham Ki Jai, Shri Mayapur Dham Ki Jai, Shri Matur Dham Ki Jai, Go Premanandi Hari Hari Bhoom. Nidai Thai Nidai 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 So, thank you very much. Uh, we'll just, uh, for the end of the program, just read, learn one little verse from Bhagavad Gita, um, which is from the sixth chapter, 647. So the first word, Yoginam. Repeat, Yoginam. Say it again. <laughs> Yoginam. Yoginam. Api. Api. Sarvesham. Sarvesham. Mad. Gitenan Taratmana Gitenan Taratmana Shradavan Shradavan Bajate Bajate Yomam Yomam Same Same Yuktatamaho Madaha So first line Yoginam Apisarvesham Yoginam Apisarvesham Yoginam Apisarvesham Mad Gitenan Taratmana Mad Gitenan Shradavan Bajate Umam Shradavan Bajate Umam Same Yuktatma Mataha Same Yuktatma Mataha First word Yoginam of Yogis Api also Sarasham all types of Madgitinantar abiding in me always thinking of me Atmana within himself Shradavam in full faith, Bajate for in this transcendental loving service, Yo one who, Mam to me, Sa he made by me, Yuktatamo Mataha the greatest yogi is considered. So the translation, and of all yogis the one with great faith who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me. He is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all, that is my opinion. So that's the real meaning of yoga, you know, is to, to connect with God. And um, So if we chant the holy names, we read Bhagavad Gita, uh, and try to keep our lives centered on the Lord, um, automatically our problems are taken away, you know. What we think is impossible, we think is, you know, so much heartache or sorrow. Uh, we think, how can I, you know, my life will uh, always be like this. I will never be relieved of that. But Krishna is very much aware of what's happening to us. Um, he's very kind and merciful, and all it takes is surrender to him. If we try to give ourselves to him, then we are allowing him in our lives. You know, we're welcoming him in our lives, in our hearts, like that. And when that happens, he does the miracles. He does the miracles, you know. And of course, the greatest miracle is that we become attracted to him, become attached to him. Um, and when that happens, we actually realize that everything else is... Um, We can leave it behind. We can leave it behind, you know. Krishna, the name Tr Krishna, all attractive. He's so attractive that the more we become attached to him, uh, his name, his reading about, hearing about him, his service, the more we find our lives are so satisfying. You know, we, our frustration goes away, our suffering goes away, like that, by his grace. So... Um, this is what we're meant for. We're meant to be <clears throat> in love and happy with Krishna, serving Krishna, 
And that's eternal and everlasting relationship. Um, and as that happens, this material world and everything, all its glamour and everything else that we've been holding on so tight to, we let it go, we let it go, we let it go. You know? uh, I realize that it's all temporary. And uh, of course, the hardest thing to let go is relationships. But even those, we have to let go with the faith that Krishna will look after everyone. You know? um, we can't look after everyone forever, no. You can love your husband or your daughter or your granddaughter or whoever for 10, 20, 50 years and then when they go, are you going to look after them? No. Who's going to look after them? Krishna. Yeah. So we also need to let that go, that you know, my responsibility to my family members, uh, my attachment, my love and affection obviously is natural, but at some point I have to accept that these are temporary relationships and I have my, my future for my soul is completely independent of them. These relationships are not eternal. Um, and the more we become attached to Krishna, the more we can let that go. We can let it go. We can let it go. Um, and Krishna will look after everyone. You know, Krishna is looking after everyone. Um, you know, we all lose loved ones. Like my parents, I've lost my parents, my father, my mother, you know. Um, but I do know that Krishna is looking after them, you know. They are somewhere else, different planet, different body, who knows, you know. Hopefully they're back in the spiritual world. But who's looking after them? Krishna, yeah. Who's loving them? Krishna, yeah. I can't love them anymore. You know, they're not part of my life. You know, they're out of sight, they're gone. Um, so that needs to happen. That <coughs> I let go, you know, I let go. Um, and instead just focus on... Krishna is the, the love of our lives, you know. We don't know that yet, we don't realize that yet, but He is. Um, he's the Lord. The Supreme Lord, the Supreme Divine Person. He's youth. He's youthful. He's a young coward boy. You know, he's very lovable. Plays the flute and takes the cows out every day. And he's very kind and merciful. You know, you'll see pictures of Krishna. He's petting the cows. You know, feeding. He loves all living creatures. You know. Um, so that's that love, exchange of love. I give Krishna love, and Krishna gives me love is perfect, perfect. He is the perfect uh, friend. He is the perfect friend. Yeah, how about that? And it, he will never leave you. He is there forever. We just have to realize that. He's there, but do we realize it? Yeah? Are we thinking about him? Yeah, or what are we thinking about? Some poor man, this guy, He's thinking about some woman who took his money and he's going to court. That's what he's thinking about. He's not thinking about Krishna. How sad is that? You know? How's that going to help him? How's that going to make him happy, you know? Getting back his 250,000 rand, you know? <laughs> is that going to make him happy? <laughs> you know? No. Because, because there's no love there. You think the 250,000 rand is going to give him love? Forever? No. You can't buy love. Yeah? So will he be happy? Even if he gets these 250,000 rand back, you know? No. And when he dies, where's that money gone? Yeah? So what is that? It's crazy. No love. No love there. Love is what makes us happy, actually. Love is the source of happiness. And that love is pure when it's from Krishna, you know? There's no cheating there. So when that happens, we begin to feel, wow, this is so beautiful. I'm giving Krishna love. Krishna's giving me love. It's so beautiful. Yeah? And that makes us happy. So nothing else makes us happy. It doesn't matter. Yeah? And even relationships of this world, they also cannot make me happy. My mother, my sister, my brother, my father, yeah? no, they cannot make me happy. For some time, you know, you go and have a nice 
holiday or a nice meal, you sit together and you play. But it's like a candle, it'll go out one day. And the candle will blow out, yeah. And then there's no more light, no more happiness there. So, whichever way you look at it, Krishna is the answer, you know, Krishna is the answer. And we're fortunate, you know, I mean, there are many, many people in the world, most people in the world, they don't know who God is. You know, you go and talk to some Christian, some Muslim, some guy. They say, I'm a Christian, I'm a, I'm a Muslim, I'm this. But they don't know who God is. They don't know what he looks like. They don't know his address. They don't know what he's doing. They don't know his friends. They don't know about God. So how can they love him? Hmm? But we know Krishna is God. Wow, how about that? That's amazing. <laughs> Krishna. So we're lucky, we're blessed, you know. Mm. I mean, now we must keep going and get more and more Krishna. Mm. Everything else can. Not, don't, let, don't waste my time. Don't waste my time with that <laughs> stuff because my time is precious. My time is precious. I don't know how much time I've got, you know. Let me finish up, like Prabhupada would say like that. Finish up your business in this material world, this lifetime. Don't come back another 50, 100,000 times. Finish up your business here. Finish up in the material world, this lifetime. Yeah. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe.